Hi, I'm Dennis Grubb with Yellow Blue Ecotech Technologies, here today to show you some of the features and benefits of our revolutionary new solar-powered attic fan. The first thing I'm going to do is go over some of the features and benefits of the system, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and install the system from A to Z. So let's get started. The first feature that I'd like to talk about is our proprietary polycrystalline solar panel. It's designed specifically for this application. It has very high light penetration. It's weatherproof in the most severe conditions. There's no need to adjust the angle of the solar panel. Do try to install the system on the south facing portion of the roof, but it will still work fine on the east, north, or west portion of the roof. The next part of the system that I'd like to talk about is the base and the internal components. Made out of aircraft grade spun aluminum. It's powder coated for increased weather resistance and beauty. There's no need to worry about rust or expansion issues in diverse weather because there are no seams. There are no plastic parts to fail in high temperature areas, high uh, ultraviolet areas, or during a fire. The next part of the system that I'd like to talk about is an internal air diversion cowling. What this is is an air diverting cowling that takes the air that's coming up out of the attic, that's being blown by the fan, and diverts it in a smooth curve so that it exits out of the system very efficiently. Another very important feature of the system is the motor. It's a high performance proprietary brushless DC motor. It has a built-in vibration isolation system with a computer chip built inside of the motor that will harvest more energy out of the solar panel. Another feature that's not available on any other product in the world. The last feature I'd like to talk to you about is the fan blades. They're pre-balanced with the motor. So in the factory, we're dynamically balancing the fan blades with the motor. That makes the system last a lot longer because it's not putting extra stress on the bearings. And it also eliminates vibration that's being transmitted into the house. And one of the most important features that we'd like everyone out there to remember, this is an American engineered and American manufactured product. We're going to go ahead and go out now and do the installation from A to Z, and that should answer all your questions on how the system should be installed. Tools needed to install the Yellow Blue Ecotech Solar Powered Attic Ventilation System. Sawzall, high performance drill motor, safety gloves, caulking gun, roof and flashing sealant, half inch spade bit, common screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, utility knife, tape measure, hammer, flat bar or wonder bar, construction pencil, two inch screw, and safety goggles. Okay, this is our mock-up that we're going to use for the installation demo today. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the attic. Uh, I'm going to show you a technique that uh, can be used by placing a screw through the center of the rafters. There's another technique you can use by using um, a stud finder, finding out where the trusses are. Uh, some of the more experienced installers can find the, the, the spaces between the trusses just by simply walking on the roof. We've determined that it's going to go into this bay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tape measure up to the top of the ridge. I'm going to find uh, my 24 inch mark. And then I'm going to go and measure between the two trusses. And uh, it's about 10 inches in the center. I'm going to mark an X here. Then I'm going to take my screw. I'm going to place the screw and drill it directly through the uh, uh, the plywood through the roofing material so that it's exposed up on the roof. You can see here, now we're going to place the template that's included inside of your kit over the screw and then the purpose of that is so that we can then take uh, your construction pencil and mark onto the roof around the circumference of the template and you'll have a perfect guide so that you'll know where to cut the hole with your sawzall. Okay, after you've made your mark, as you can see here around the template, now you're going to take your uh, half inch paddle bit, you're going to place the half inch paddle bit directly on your line, and then you're going to drill a hole through the roofing material and the plywood below it. That's going to be a starter hole for your sawzall. made our pilot hole, now it's time to cut the hole through the roof. Use a sharp uh, blade when you cut that and do a neat job when cutting through the shingles or whatever roofing material you're cutting through.
One of the reasons why we uh, place the screw in here is not only for placement of the template on top, but it's also a place that the installer can hold the uh, slug when it's being removed because it's very important not to drop this down into the attic because it hits the drywall, it could break through into the house causing a very expensive repair. So be sure not to drop this. Okay, the, the next step is we're going to take our flat bar and we're going to lift up the shingles around here. And the reason for doing that is so that we can make sure that the um, flashing is going to be able to slide back there about four and a half inches. Okay, in this step we're going to take the Sawzall, we're going to place the um, blade of the Sawzall underneath the tar paper, between the tar paper and the roofing material, and we're going to make a circle. And what that'll do is that'll cut any nails that might be in the way so that the flashing will slide underneath there. Uh, where the uh, shingle stops and the tar paper begins, we like to get the flashing underneath the tar paper. And reach in here and cut back about four and a half inches. It's not always necessary to get the flashing under the tar paper. Uh, different roofers have different um, ideas and thoughts on how that should be done. I'm going to recommend it that it gets uh, installed underneath the tar paper. After the hole's been prepped, we're going to slide the flashing in and do what we call a dry fit. So we put it underneath the shingles. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off now. I'm going to place some sealant underneath the uh, bottom of the, of the uh, solar fan and then place it back under the shingles and then we'll fasten it down. Okay, now we're going to apply two concentric beads of uh, roof sealant around the bottom of this flashing. One of them is going to be approximately here and the other bead is going to be here. Don't put it too close to the inside of the flashing. Keep it closer to the outside. What this will do, this will uh, help uh, to ensure that the uh, unit will be held to the roof a little bit tighter as well as keep any possible leaks that might be coming in from up above the um, flashing. As I've, after I've applied the sealant to the bottom of the flashing, I need to place it over the hole, but I have to hold it up so that I don't end up wiping all the sealant off. Okay, now we've placed the solar fan on the roof. The sealant is under here. We have it straight and level. Now we're going to place the screws. We recommend two screws in the bottom, two screws in the side, two screws in the back. Okay, after you've installed all the screws around the uh, solar fan, um, you can go ahead and put a bead of caulk all the way around the neck. Very important you get it around the back, get it on the top of the screws that we've placed. In this case, so that this looks nice, I'm going to place a bit of sealant here, and I'm going to put this small piece of roofing material back, because I'd like it to look nice. Okay, the installation is now complete. I've applied a bead of sealant around the outside neck of the flashing just to make sure that we don't have any leaks. The sun is shining, the solar powered attic fan is operational, and the installation is now complete. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.